Nathan Miller once again with Hometown Story Channel. Uh, today we're actually going to be starting a new series uh, called Hometown History Folk Tales. I'm really, really excited for this. At the very beginning, I'm going to do something a little bit because I don't want to make another vlog. So I'm going to do a short mail time and give a shout out because uh, I got a package the other day and then uh, talk about a couple things. All right, so I wanted to give a quick shout out. I got uh, the other day, went to the post office, and I <coughs> had a package waiting for me uh, in a P.O. box, uh, which was, I had, you know, last time I got a package through that, turned out to be something called Live Samples, and uh, it was for a different named person, so I handed it back in. Um, so I thought, oh, this guy, another one, like I got live samples of something. It's sort of like Cliff does his teaching and he gets like live frog samples or not even know if it's live, it's still alive. But but anyways, so I looked at it, it was like, nope, it's for Jonathan Miller. So I got excited. Uh, it was from a Debbie, so thank you. Uh, one of the things in there was bacon jerky from, uh, I think it's Jack Link's, delicious. I've never had bacon jerky, to be honest. Uh, like Cliff the Wondering Woodsman, I really enjoy uh, jerky, and that was quite delicious. This is all that's left of it. Uh, it's sort of like those confusing Uber Eats commercials where it's like, food? Not food. Apparently, I ate most of the bag as well. I don't remember whether that was delicious or not, but, you know, you never know. Some of the medicine I take, sometimes it you know, helps you to not remember stuff. This I did not eat, though, was a cool bookmark. Uh, it's probably, it says, enjoy the next chapter, which I thought was really, really cool. So I have that in my one book, uh, I'm reading right now. It's, uh, about Michael, Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel. And it sort of goes into one of my favorite movies is, uh, now I can't, I won't be able to think of the name, uh, uh, the ecstasy, uh, the, ex the agony and the ecstasy. Got it right. I actually remembered it. That's Charlton Hus or Charlton Heston and Jack Hawkins, I believe, or Jack. He's a British actor, phenomenal actor, and he plays Pope Julius, and Charlton Heston plays Michelangelo. I love these fifties and sixties movies, like the graininess. Uh, me and my dad used to watch these western movies all the time with John Wayne. I just always love the look, the tech the new Technicolor and all that kind of stuff. And just the way they told stories back back then. It was just a different age of Hollywood, and I just enjoyed that, which segues well into what hometown history folktale is about. So when we think about folktales, there's a lot of different things that come to mind. Uh, every country has them. Every region of the world has them. Uh, you'll go into fables like Aesop's, Aesop's Fables, which is the most famous. Uh, and then you go into, like here in America, because we are a melting pot of so many different uh, peoples and races, all those stories come here. Now, I'm going to be concentrating on the get-go with, I have this book here, uh, Amish Folk Tales. Uh, it's a pretty cool book and other stories of the Pennsylvania Dutch. So a lot of them are Germanic by nature. Uh, their origin so it'd be European tales it has some English tales in there as well but the Amish usually have sort of those Dutchy or German uh, backgrounds and origins for their tales so we're gonna be going into those will actually be the first ones we'll do which we'll do one or two from this book about a character named either Eilen Spiegel or Elin Spiegel and you gotta say it, angry and aggressive it's sort of like I always love those memes where it's like if you love someone, you know, yell it at them in Klingon or in German, you know, because, you know, love is important, but it's also scary and, and all these other things. So he's like, Elin Stiegel and his shenanigans. And there's a little Irish in there as well. In the <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, anyways, if I can find a page somewhere in there. But anyways... So this is a, it's a cool book, and they have a bunch of the... I've never heard of Elin Spiegel. Uh, my dad uh, and a lot of the people he was around, I remember in the barber shop when I was a kid and we went to, a lot of them spoke in Pennsylvania Dutch. and I understand a little bit, but not fluently like my dad. Like, they'd just be talking to each other in this, you know, Pennsylvania Dutchie, and uh, it was unique. But, uh, you know, I 
an area where you, know, you go a little east and south of here, you're in Amish country. It's not unfamiliar to be seen Amish buggies and you know the Amish going to their farms or their churches or their schools and that type of stuff. And I, I was a you know my first job was Dutch Way uh, markets, and we used to have a lot of Amish people that came into the store. It's a very Dutchy. Uh, owned by people that were Dutch, not probably Mennonite more than than Dutch, but uh, we had a lot of uh, a lot of Amish people that came into the store. But folk tales are really really neat. A lot of them, like Aesop's Fables, they sort of is not just an entertaining story, but there's a moral counterweight to that. Uh, and you'll find that we're, we'll we'll wind up going into like the Asian tales. There's a lot of European fairy tales, a lot of African. Uh, tales. Uh, you'll have Russian fairy tales and, and folk tales and stuff. So this is a series that really can do anything we want. But we're going to start with these. Uh, American folk tales sort of took on a life of their own. Probably some influences from, from Europe and some of these other ones, other areas. Uh, but we when we think about our folk heroes, you're thinking about people like Paul Bunyan, Johnny Appleseed, John Henry, uh, individuals like that, uh, Pecos Bill. There was a cool movie made back, I think, in the early 90s. Uh, it's called Tall Tales. Now the uh, the CGI that they use, especially for like Pecos Bill, sort of like, oh, wow. But other now and then when I'm on Disney Plus, I'm like, yeah, I got to watch Tall Tales again. I, was, I remember it was one of my neighbors, the Wolves. I watched it with my friend Sam Wolf and Johnny Wolf. And... Uh, they were the first ones that introduced me to that film. I absolutely adore it. Uh, Patrick Swayze actually plays Pecos Bill. Uh, I'm trying to think what Oliver Platt plays. I think Paul Bunyan. And then I'm not sure what the actor's name was that played John Henry, but these were three of the core figures. And that was sort of in the West in and of itself. A lot of tall tales, a lot of those heroes. Some of them weren't that great of people because, you know, the West was sort of its own big wild area that people didn't understand and uh so a lot of tall tales and things like that came out of it folk tales you know a lot of it was for entertainment and uh just experiencing a place that you didn't experience before or ever were going to and uh folk tales sort of cut to the very core of who we are our dreams and uh that's why they're so important they're they're unique they're bizarre in a lot of ways uh, but I think it'll be a fun series telling these stories. I enjoy being a storyteller, and uh, this will give me a way to learn some new tales myself and things I haven't been introduced to before, things that a lot of you guys haven't probably been introduced to before either. So I'm going to do a short thing here on Island Spiegel, and uh, there, a lot of them are really tiny, just sort of funny tales, but you know, there's some similarities with uh, other tales that we've heard as well, but probably came from this. But uh, we'll give you a little bit of the origin of this character, sort of uh, as we joke about uh, our Pennsylvania Dutch. He was a Nick's Nook, so he's a naughty, a little bit of a stinker. Uh, got up to all kinds of shenanigans and uh, adventures. So with that, I want to say welcome to this next series, uh, Hometown of History Presents folk tales and like I said it's going to be stuff from everywhere because I have I got to find a couple of my books I have a number of them the folk tales and as you saw the intro outro video with the music you'll see a couple figures like John Henry Pecos Bill um, Paul Bunyan I believe there's even some real life people that uh, from the west there's uh, the film The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio where he gets attacked by that bear that's another one of those big, like they call them, those penny dime novels or something like that. And they'd have them, uh, you know, there were quite a few of those that, uh, from the OK Corral, uh, gunfight at the OK Corral, um, there, that, that's one of those, Wyatt Earp. There were quite a few of those done. There were ones done about Jesse James. Like I said, there's a lot of those people that weren't good people, but... That was it, was it was a form of entertainment. It was those were their tales. They were American folk tales of that time. It's sort of and eventually I think our modern folk tales probably the closest thing to that 
would be our superhero movies like Marvel and DC and Image Comics and all those different groups. It's sort of a lot of it has to do with like mythology. It has a basis in that. So it's I think this would be a pretty cool series and uh, maybe we'll get to Captain America sometime. My favorite comic book character, but probably not. But a uh, lot to lot to do. I want to buy. There's a couple other books I want to buy that are on like central central Pennsylvania lore and superstitions and a lot of really neat unique stuff there's a purpose behind it and uh yeah so let's go visit Elon Spiegel and his shenanigans and see what he's all about all right thanks everybody so the history of this Elon Spiegel or Till Eulen Spiegel it actually has several different translations and spellings uh is the protagonist of a German chapbook published in 1515. Uh, they said it could be even earlier, uh, and he has a possible background, early, middle, low German folklore. Uh, he's a native of what's called the Duchy of Brunswick Lundberg, whose picturesque, picturesque career takes him to many places throughout the Holy Roman Empire. He plays practical jokes on his contemporaries at every turn, exposing vices. Uh, and his life is set in the first half of the 14th century and the final chapters of that chapbook. Uh, just, and it describes his death from the plague in 1350. Uh, his surname actually translates to Al Miner, or yeah, Al Miner, Al Mirror. And the front uh, piece of the 1515 chap chapbook, as well as his alleged tombstone, tombstone which they actually, uh, actually have, uh, it has a comprising of an owl and a hand mirror. So how much uh, of this is based in some kind of reality that there was a person that was sort of a stinker that went around? He's generally viewed as sort of a jovial type character, not so much like in Norse mythology, uh, Loki being that there were evil purposes behind things, but that's sort of where it came from. Now, eventually, <coughs> this character who was beloved made his way over into, uh, with the Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, well, it's on an interesting note. In 1895, the German composer Richard Strauss wrote Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks, and today is performed by symphony or orchestras throughout the world. The tone poem celebrates a legendary character known in German folklore for his mischief and his impertinence. Uh, the Pennsylvania Dutch people have a counterpart with a similar name, which we talk about, Elenspiegel. Uh, in some accounts, you may even find the name as Elen Pigel, Irish Spiegel, Irish uh, Bickel, or Eden Spiegel. So I'm probably butchering all those. But uh, his favorite source of stories uh, come through the Pennsylvania Dutch region. He's usually thought of as a lovable character though always with a mind of his own. And the funny thing is you could ask around and it's unlikely that you cannot find anyone, uh, you can find anyone who's actually met him. But many will insist that they know someone who has. Oh yes, he and my father were close friends before the war. Or I know a man over in the next county who bought a horse for him. Or when I was just a boy, he was coming for a visit with the people who lived in the next farm to ours. But then he got sick and wasn't able to make it. Somehow the meeting with Elin Spiegel never quite took place. So they had, a, in most stories about him that are passed along from generation to generation, he outwits somebody, plays a trick on them with his cleverness or his trickery. And many tales, the one he outwits is the devil himself. You sort of think of that song that the devil went down to Georgia and the whole uh, fiddle playing and stuff like that. And this first story is sort of along those lines. Uh, in one such adventure, the devil challenged Elin Spiegel to a contest of strength. To prove his power, as soon as Elin Spiegel accepted the challenge, the devil tore a full-grown tree right out of the ground and then tossed it into the air. Now it was Elin Spiegel's turn. Without a word, he began to climb an even larger tree. Why are you climbing that tree, the devil asked. I'm not going to waste my time in pulling up just one tree, Elin Spiegel replied. I'll tie the tops of several trees together, and then I can pull them all out at the same time. The devil promptly gave up the contest. On another occasion, Elin Spiegel and the devil joined in a farming venture, with the understanding that they would share the crops. 
They agreed at Elon Spiegel's suggestion that the devil should take everything that grew above the ground uh, and his partner everything that grew below. They planted potatoes so the devil earned nothing but the leaves and the stems. The next year, the devil thought to himself, he won't pull that trick on me this time. He insisted that his share would be everything that grew above the, or below the ground. They planted wheat and the devil ended up with only the roots. The third year, the devil insisted that he was to receive both what grew above the ground and what grew below the ground. Elon Spiegel at first objected, but that will leave me with the only part that grows in the middle, he protested. Then he relented, oh, very well, have your way. He and the devil grew corn. The devil ended up with the roots and stalks. Elon Spiegel got the ears, and two of them set out to acquire some pigs. We need a way to divide them that will be fair, Elon Spiegel told the devil. Here's how we'll do it. You may have all the pigs with straight tails, and I'll just take whatever's left, the one with curly tails. As a result, the de devil obtained nothing but sick pigs. Elon Spiegel's were all healthy. So it's just sort of an example of these different stories with uh, Elon Spiegel. It's sort of, I don't know if there's any kind of uh, moral to this story, but it's just sort of comical stories. The Germans had sort of weird senses of humor with that kind of stuff. But So this is Elon Spiegel. Some of his adventures. We'll go in and talk about some more of his adventures. And like they said, a lot of the tales have to do with him sort of tricking the devil. Uh, but so till next time, uh, our next adventure with the folk tales. Uh, thank you for coming along. And uh, as always, in the next tale, we'll see you all about town. <laughs>